I'd like to share with you some thoughts of some new techniques Arthrex has to deal with uh, common cartilage problems. I want to start with the basics, beginning with microfracture. We all do this for small lesions particularly, but we need to know that you do not get hyaline cartilage back, but you get fibrocartilage. The shortcomings as well as repa the repaired cartilage volume is pretty unpredictable. And we know after two years, multiple studies have shown the results of microfracture clinically deteriorate. But what you might not think about is a different way to do it. The traditional awl is used, but there's a new way uh, with drilling. And Chen did a very elegant study in rabbits and looked at uh, using micro drilling versus an awl. And uh, what they looked at was either two millimeter drilled holes or six millimeter drilled holes. And they found in the drilled specimens that they had better type two collagen, better cell types for cartilage repair and a better fill. Importantly, when they used the drill, they did not see any heat necrosis. So these are a sample. This is a post-op 14-day histologic study. Uh, the micro-drilling here in the middle and the, the micro-fracturing here on the right. What you see in the micro-fracturing is just what you think. You see compacted and fractured bone where the micro-drilling is more open and more cartilage, early restoration of cartilage is, occurs with the micro-drilling. They're, they're free of debris. The problem with the microfracture is you actually get a fracture response. And this is a patient of mine. I've seen this fairly often. This is six years out from a microfracture I did to the trochlea, and you can see the hypertrophic bone. You actually get an internal osteophyte. Here's another case I saw recently. Same thing. This was five years out from a microfracture. You can see the, the osteophyte. And this is the arthroscopic picture. So the knee does not work too well when you have this internal bone growth rubbing on the tibia. So microfracture is problematic. The power pick that Arthrex has is great. Uh, there's less heat, and you, importantly, you get less bone edema. If you do a post-operative MRI, you don't see bone edema from using uh, the power pick. It attaches to your shaver. There's two angles, either 30 or 45 degrees, and there's two length of the pin at either 2 millimeters or 4 millimeters. If you do your standard microfracture, remove your zone of calcified cartilage. Here's the power pick. Space your holes, usually 2 to 3 millimeters. Very easy to use. So the power pick is a real advantage, and again, it just attaches directly to your shaver. This is a case that I did recently uh, that had a 15-year-old young man with bilateral patellar OCD lesions. You can see here on his x-rays, his AP and his infrapatellar view. Here's his MRI, and you can see the, the abnormal medial patellar facet. Uh, and again, he had this on both sides. And what I chose to do was to internally fix both of these lesions. And for that, Arthrex has the biocompression screws available made of PLLA. They have a stepped pitch and taper for compression two diameters, either 3 millimeters or 3.5. The 3.5 are cannulated. And we also have chondral darts available, which have a double reversed barb design. They're 1.3 millimeters in diameter and 18 millimeters long. So here's the case. You can see the arthroscopic picture of this flap of the uh, medial patera facet. I did this with a mini open. We, we tap first. And here's my screw fixation with the bowel compression screw, which really gives you excellent compression as you tighten it down. In this particular case, I wanted to control rotation, so I added a chondral dart here. You drill and pass the dart through the cannula system. And this is the completed repair with the dart there and then the bowel compression screw seen here, recessed just slightly below the level of the arterial cartilage, and you get great compression here. This is another lesion. Uh, this was a large lateral trochlear lesion in a 14-year-old uh, that I chose to fixate as well, uh, utilizing four of the bowel compression screws. It's important to prepare the defect, and you want to remove uh, this fibrous tissue here before you insert. This is a case that I want to share with you. It's a large uh, osteochondral uh, lesion of the medial femoral condyle. You can see here OCD lesion on his MRI. This particular case, I do have a second look that I'll show you. This is his preoperative MRI on the left. Here's his one-year uh, MRI here, and you can see how there's leftover signal from the bowel compression screws that I used, but you see restoration of the tide mark in the articular surface. So this is the clinical case. This young man had had a prior procedure before I had got to him, uh, but they thought it was a stable lesion. It was sent to me. And clearly, there's a line of demarcation with this large OC lesion of the femur, medial femoral condyle. I mobilized it first, used a decret, and I like to debride the bony bed. And I also like to debride a little bit of the bone that's attached to the articular cartilage. It's important you don't recess it, though. You just want to get that fibrous tissue cleaned up to enhance the healing process. The advantage with this system is we have a clear guide. So you place your guide pin, your tap over your guide pin. And so you can see this all done arthroscopically. And here's my first screw going into position. 
and I recess it just slightly below the articular surface to get the compression. So the first one's been positioned. Here's my second one. Again, the guide allows us to see as we're doing it arthroscopically, pin, tap, and then screw placement. So here's my second screw. And I prefer these over metal screws. You don't have to go back and take them out. I ended up putting three in this uh, particular uh, lesion. Here you see the three. And then I actually came back at a year. This is a year follow-up that I want to show you now in this same case. And you can see the appearance of his medial femoral condyle a year later. Nice and stable. You don't see the screws. Uh, there's been no problem with the overlying articular surface, and, and clinically he did very well. So the biocompression screws have been very valuable adjunct for me. Also, we have available the osteochondral autograph transfer system, or OATS. Now, this is a transplant of a Highland cartilage plug or multiple plugs, if you wish, to fill chondral defects. Do it arthroscopically. Big advantage, you're using the own patient's tissue. You can do multiple plugs, as I said, and it's a cost savings, particularly against uh, ACI. These are the instruments seen here. An important level one study that was done about uh, OATS versus microfracture. This was in 60 patients that were athletes. Their average age was 24 years. And the advantage of this study is they looked at a second look scope at a year, and they also looked at MRI at three years. And they found excellent good repair in the OATS group at 84% versus only 52% for the microfracture at second look. And arthroscopically, the le uh, my, by way of MRI, rather, at three years, 94% were excellent in the OATS group versus only 49% for the microfracture. And finally, importantly, return to sport, 93% for OATS versus only 52% for microfracture. Also, studies by Barber and Ma have shown that you have maintenance of both the hyaline cartilage and the subchondral bone with the transplanted OATS plugs. And a Cochrane review in 2011 showed that the outcome of OATS was equivalent to ACI, autologous chondroslate implantation. Now I'd like to talk to you about a new Arthrex product called BioCartilage. What is BioCartilage? It's Allograft's cartilage extracellular matrix. It has key components of cartilage, type 2, collagen, proteoglycans, and growth factors. How is it processed? It's dehydrated and micronized, 100 to 300 micron size, and it's packaged, and it has, importantly, it has a five-year shelf life. How do we use it? It's a scaffold over microfracture. This is a microfracture plus type procedure. It signals the autologous uh, cellular interactions within the scaffold, and the goal is to improve the quality of healing after a microfracture or bone stimulation technique. This is a study that was done by the University of Miami Tissue Bank in baboons, and they filled osteochondral defects with the micronized articular uh, allograft cartilage particulate. And the gross appearance, as you see on the right, of nice hyaline articular surface, uh, also a saffron uh, O staining. You can see good uh, lacunae of the cartilage. How do we prepare it? This is the mixing and delivery system. You mix the powder of the allograft cartilage first, and you add ACP. It's usually one-to-one -one ratio. You want to have a thick, almost like a slurry. And it snaps on a little uh, device to, to mix it for you, so it all comes as a kit. Then you mix that up to create almost a putty. Seen here in five, and then you assemble your needle, and you can deliver the product either arthroscopically or open. So why do we use PRP as a mixing liquid? Milano did a nice study looking at microfracture. Uh, in one group, microfracture only. The other group, they added five injections of ACP. And what they looked at is the histology, as you can see here on the right, at 12 months. And when there was uh, no ACP, there was a large defect. When the uh, ACP was utilized, there was a better uh, healing response. This is an equine study done by Lisa Fortier, uh, looking at uh, five horses. There were two defects created in each knee, as seen here as the video is running, proximal and distally in the trochlea. Bowel cartilage was in one knee, microfracture in the other. This is the bowel cartilage. You, create, you do your power picking, dry it. And here's the bowel cartilage being delivered. And you smooth it off. You don't want to overfill the defect. And then we seal it with fiber glue. In, in Lisa's study, they looked at arthroscopic scoring as well as MRI and histology. So here comes the fiber and glue to seal the, uh, the defect with the articular surface now restored. Put the, this is again in the equine uh, model in her study. So here's their data at two months, six months, and 13 months, second looks, microfracture above, biocartilage below, and you can see the better fill with biocartilage and the more normal appearing articular surface compared to the microfracture. Again, that's in the equine model. The cartilage scoring was the same. Microfracture here at 4.8, proximal defect, 7.4 uh, for the biocartilage and also for the distal. So the biocartilage scored better as well, the quality of the tissue. 
Here's a patient of mine, 17-year-old, who has these two very large defects of the lateral femoral condyle. You might think doing an osteochondral allograft, but I chose not to. I, wanted, I felt that I could do the biocartilage. I did a mini open. You can see that bridge of cartilage in between didn't really look that good, and I took it all down. So it's a three by three centimeter defect. Here's the power pick. Here's the uh, biocartilage applied. You smooth it off again. You don't want it uh, over the edge of the articular surface. Don't make it too proud. Here it's sealed with the fibrin glue upon completion. So again, this was a three by three lesion, and uh, this is his preoperative MRI. On the left, you can see the large defect of the articular surface. This is an MRI that I did recently. It was only 10 months out. You can see the excellent restoration of the articular surface, and the tide mark is actually coming back as well. And again, that was a very large defect. Here's another one I had. This was a patient with patellar instability who had a large 3x3 three three defect, also of his lateral femoral condyle. There's the arthroscopic picture. I actually did the same thing. I did a mini open here. There's the, the sealed uh, uh, fibrin glue, glue over the bowel cartilage. And look at his MRI. His preoperative MRI concerned me because he had this big cystic area of the, of the femur, as you can see. But only nine months later, you can see the, the bone edema is gone, the cystic area is gone, the tide mark is starting to restore. So I'm very encouraged about uh, these results with the biocartilage, even in large defects. So in conclusion, uh, I want to make the key point that the knee is an organ. I've showed you some new techniques that are great. We have to remember to think about the whole knee. We have to think about alignment, number one, uh, in terms of many of these patients need an osteotomy in addition to the cartilage procedure. Uh, we have to think about the meniscus. They may need meniscal transplantation or they may need an ACL reconstruction. So we can't just take these procedures out of context. It all has to go together. But the advantages that I've showed you, preservation, you have the bowel compression screws or the chondral darts to preserve articular cartilage lesions. Power pick is a great way to do an enhanced and a better microfracture for small lesions. Reconstruction-wise, OATS procedure is an old standby, works great, and I've showed you the new bowel cartilage, and that's very encouraging. But again, I want to emphasize the importance of uh, assessing alignment, especially, and uh, Tom DiBerardino is going to teach us more about the needs for osteotomy around the tibia. Thank you very much.